Back on the MPAG Zoomcast, I'm Ed Kirchstoffer, Chief Operating Officer of Mayo Performing Arts Center. Today, we are joined by John Kudia, one of the four phantoms coming to MPAC on Saturday, March 2nd. John holds the distinct honor of being the first and only actor to perform both as the Phantom and Phantom of the Opera and as Jean Valjean in Les Mis on Broadway. He is equally at home in opera, theater, and on concert stages, and again, he will be here on March 2nd for a, a really great concert. John, welcome. Thank you, thank you, it's good to be here. Tell us a little about the four phantoms. Well, we have four gentlemen who have kind of known each other over the years, come up in the business together, and by varying means have ended up all playing the phantom and phantom of the opera in one place or other, or in some cases, many places. Mm. And uh, Frank D'Ambrosio, one of the four phantoms, who are Frank D'Ambrosio, Kieran Sheehan, Brent Barrett, and myself. Frank came up with the idea of, wouldn't it be great to have a couple of these guys that I know who played the part come together and give the audience a chance to see a little bit of how each of us play the phantom both distinctly and a lot of the things that we have in common um, as far as the role, plus give the audience a chance to see some of the other shows and some of the stories of our lives and how we got there. So what so that's so what will be some of the the music from some of the other shows that you'll be doing aside from Phantom? Well, I get to sing a wonderful song from Stephen Sondheim's show Company. And that show, uh, that song I chose in particular because it's a theatrical um, version that evolved out of the songwriting, love songwriting, storytelling music that I grew up with. And it really kind of is the perfect marriage of theatrical storytelling and beautiful music, just like a lot of the music that inspired me when I was a kid. Um, to go into theater. For the other gentleman, uh, Brent Barrett sings from the musical Chicago, which he was a part of on and off for 22 years. Um, I don't want to give away too many of the secrets, but Frank um, has a wonderful story about a film project that everyone knows um, that uh, he gets to sing a song from. Um, and then we have a couple of pop inspirations um, like for us, we all share an inspiration from Billy Joel, uh, the Bee Gees, and uh, things like that, along with just great theatrical music that um, we either performed, love singing, or want to do specifically for a theater-loving audience. Is there like a brotherhood of phantoms, a fraternity? I mean, there's obviously a bunch of you who have been phantoms. What is there some defining characteristic that you all share? Uh, I guess you got to be just a little bit not right in the head. Um, it's the kind of show where when you're playing the character, you spend a lot of time by yourself. Um, the character is always waiting behind a mirror or hiding, you know, it's a, behind a cross in a mausoleum and you spend a lot of time with yourself. So you have to be, I think, very secure in being able to manage those times and step out on stage and go a hundred miles an hour um, and jump on a moving train to tell the story. So I think there's a kind of tenacity. Um, there's a kind of, uh, a kind of bravery that's involved and Maybe it's half bravery and half um, a little bit of denial <laughs> that because you find yourself arriving at the at a moment where you're going to sing one of the most famous songs in musical theater history, and you kind of have to block out uh, those expectations that you put on yourself. Um, there is a brotherhood. It, what's interesting is we almost never work with each other. 
having being playing the same role, different years, different companies. So when we come together, it's kind of like this silent understanding of what we went through either to get the role or to play the role over a long period of time, the kind of effort it takes um, and also the rewards. So it's a really kind of tip your cap um, kind of a relationship. And we take advantage of the opportunity in concert to have fun with each other, mm. which you don't get to do a lot of times uh, when you're playing a role eight shows a week. Yeah, I, I, I read some article on one of your one of the other performers said described the show as the rat pack rat rat pack meets phantom is that an accurate yes yeah sometimes you know much to the chagrin of our stage managers and directors we do tend to allow some of our relationships or spontaneity to come through you know within reason and um it helps us uh keep enjoying the show as we do it and it also um, helps to give the audience a sense that we really do have a good time uh, with each other. Do you rotate who does certain songs from Phantom? Do you just end up doing duets and trios and quartets on these songs? I mean, do you fight over who sings music of the night? So. We don't have to fight over that, thankfully. <laughs> um, we have some amazing four-part arrangements for a good portion of the songs. Um, so we've never had to fight over who gets to sing what and uh, been very fortunate to be able to choose the solo pieces that we each bring to the show. So I think it's interesting for the audience to hear, again, when you're hearing the music of the night, that you can hear four very distinct vocal interpretations all within the same song and then get a little bit of a sense of what it would have been like to see my performance versus Brent versus Kiran's versus Frank. Mm -hmm. And how long were you in uh, Phantom? Um, well, like I'll, I tell the audience when I see them, I, I became known in Phantom circles as a lifer, um, <laughs> of which there are many in a long running show uh, like Les Mis and Phantom. Because when I first started with Phantom, there were, um, I believe there were three companies. There was the Broadway company, there was the Music Box touring company, and there was a company in Toronto. And because I started out in the show playing Rao, who's sort of the, uh, I guess, the antagonist to the Phantom, um, I played Rao on the national tour first and then went on to play Rao in New York, started playing the Phantom as an understudy, then went on, on tour as the Phantom and then back to New York as the Phantom. So I kept changing locations and roles, but all in all, it added up to the better part of 10 years. Wow. Wow. When you what, what's the difference uh, in preparation for singing Andrew Lloyd Webber in the musical versus singing that in a concert setting? I think, you know, part of it is um, technical. You arrive at a song at a certain point over the run of a show at the same time every night. Um, so it can be slightly more predictable, I guess, where you are in the story, where your body is, where your voice is. Um, in concert, you have a slightly different challenge in that you're trying to tell a piece of the story out of context. Um, and then also you might be singing, for instance, I'm singing Love Never Dies. I'm singing uh, Till I Hear You Sing from Love Never Dies right after the opening number um and so i need to be prepared to sing that song immediately versus music of the night which comes at the end of the program in our concert but begins the phantom of the opera so it's a little bit of uh, of making sure i know that i'm ready to go when the song comes over the course of the night and then concentrating on trying to be as specific as possible um to fill in sort of what the audience has missed mm -hmm. <laughs> because they haven't been watching the show in its entirety. Mm -hmm. What do you hope that somebody walks away from after seeing this show? I think primarily we really enjoy the fact that people have gotten to know us a little bit. Um, there's a wonderful anonymity to the Phantom that 
the audience really sees a character versus an individual. And when we do the concert and we get to tell people a little bit about ourselves and about our journey, then you really, I think they really get the sense that they've learned a little something about us. And uh, when we meet people in the lobby or meet and greets after the show, um, it's always great to hear their stories about the different times they've seen the show over the years and which characters or which actors they saw play the character and what they found different or interesting about us versus them. And then also share things like, you know, I'm from Tom's River too, or I'm from Kansas too. And, you know, so that it becomes a more personal experience than sitting through the performance uh, on Broadway and then just going home, you know. It's the four fandoms in concert at Mayo Performing Arts Center on Saturday, March 2nd. We're speaking with John Kudia. John, where can people find out more information about you or the show? The four phantoms in concert.com. Obviously on the website for the Mayo, it's, uh, the tickets are available there. Um, I'm on Instagram and I also have johnkudia.com. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us for a few minutes today. We look forward to seeing you soon at MPAC. Thank you. I look forward to being close to home. <laughs>